I've been waiting to do that for a while. There needs to be less bagel and more pizza. Hi, I'm Melissa Clark. I'm a food reporter for the New York Times, and I'm in the fabulous NYT cooking studio because I want to help you out with something. Did you get an air fryer for the holidays, and are you trying to figure out how to use it? I am here to help, and I'm going to show you three of my favorite air fryer recipes. An air fryer is a teeny tiny convection oven that sits on your counter and it allows you to fry food using hot air instead of hot oil. This is what an air fryer looks like. This was the first generation of air fryers. Kind of looks like a coffee machine. It is a small footprint on your counter, but it's small and so it only cooks enough food for one to two people. Let's open it up and take a peek at air fryer air fryer anatomy. Um, okay, so this is the basket, and you put the food that you want to fry in the basket, and you can see on the bottom grooves in there, and this allows the airflow to kind of surround whatever it is that you're cooking. Then if you want to look in the top, you can see that there's a heating element and then there's a fan. And what happens when you fry, fry your food is that hot air blows onto it, the fan swirls it around, and it completely surrounds whatever you're cooking. So forcing hot air onto your food is what gives it that crispy texture and makes it seem like you fried it. At the beginning of the air fryer universe, all of the air fryers were about this size. The newer generation of air fryers are bigger. Okay, so this Air fryer is, works exactly the same as a smaller one, but as you can see, it's bigger, which means if you have a family of four, you can feed everybody at the same time and you don't have to keep going back and doing it in batches. Then there's the super fancy air fryers. Let me show you. It's hot and it's heavy <laughs> and it's strong. Thank you, Vaughn. Yep. This is not just an air fryer. It's an air fryer toaster oven, countertop oven, yeast proofer, dehydrator. Um, I think it might shine your shoes. It does your dry cleaning for sure. But what's great about them, aside from that, is that they're, they're really big. So you can do an entire sheet of french fries instead of just like one little potatoes worth of french fries. These are basically just this made small and made kind of cute. But functionally, they are the exact same thing. They're blowing that hot air all over your food. I have to admit, when I first started experimenting with air fryers, uh, I think it was about four or five years ago, I wasn't a fan. I thought that they were gonna fry my food. I mean, it's called an air fryer, right? But that's not what they do, and it's really not what they're supposed to do. I think it's a branding problem. I think they should be renamed Cute Adorable Countertop Toaster Ovens with Convection. I mean, if you're looking for crisp, crunchy, brown foods, not fried, but just say roasted to the nth degree, an air fryer is perfect for you. It cooks, you know, that individual portion of bacon. It's great for your dumplings, for your pizza bites. It's also really great and really convenient just to make a regular meal. You can cook anything that you would cook in your larger oven, smaller portions of in your air fryer, and it does it more quickly and it does it really well, especially sweet potato fries, which I'm gonna show you how to make. Sweet potato fries are delicious and they're really hard to get crisp in a regular oven. They work better in a, in a small air fryer. Preheat your air fryer so that when you add the fries, they'll start cooking immediately. While it preheats, I'm gonna cut my potato. You know how some sweet potatoes are really hard? So you wanna do these fairly thin, about a quarter of an inch. And the thinner you get them, the crispier they're gonna be. Just a little bit of olive oil, salt, and I'm gonna use paprika here, but you could use any other spice that you wanted. Um, it's telling me it's ready. It's ready for the fries. So you just wanna use enough of the olive oil and the seasonings to coat it lightly. Now this is the most important step of this recipe. When you put the fries into the air fryer, what you wanna do is line them up in one layer so that they get crisp. If you stack them, they're not gonna get crisp on all sides one at a time right across the bottom. So I'm gonna let these go for five minutes and then I'm gonna turn them perpendicular and then 10 minutes more and then we get to eat them. Nice. They look gorgeous. They look so good. They're brown, they're not burnt. 
and I am going to eat the heck out of them. Mmm, that's good. Not only are they good, they were so easy, and that is the beauty of the air fryer. It cooks the things that it cooks well, really well, and it does it in such a convenient, easy way, which means I can have sweet potato fries a lot more often. It can be hard to get an evenly cooked chicken breast in your regular oven because the heat is uneven. But with an air fryer, because the air is constantly circulating and it's such high heat, it cooks evenly and it keeps it really nice and juicy on the inside while getting browned on the outside. So this recipe is from um, my colleague Eleanor Park and it is super simple and so good. This part is thicker and this part is thinner. So by cutting it right next to the thick part, I can let this part cook a little bit longer and I can take this out of the air fryer as soon as it's done. So that way I'm gonna make sure not to overcook any of it. Just wanna season it all over with salt and pepper. If you have time to do this ahead, it's gonna taste better. You can do this a couple of hours ahead. You can do this a couple of minutes ahead. Now I'm just adding some brown sugar, some light brown sugar. Brown sugar isn't gonna make this sweet well, I mean, it's gonna add a little bit of sweetness, but it's gonna be subtle. But what it's really doing is it's gonna help with the browning. All right, now let this hang out for as long as you have, you know, five minutes, eight hours. But if you are gonna let it sit for longer than say 20 minutes, put it in the fridge, that is important. Now I'm gonna do a little marinade for it. So soy sauce, rice vinegar, and olive oil. You just wanna turn it and get it covered in the marinade. And again, at this point, you wanna let it sit just for about five minutes. It's not just a marinade. It also becomes like a sauce in the air fryer because the air fryer circulating heat reduces it really quickly and it gets almost like a glaze. So I have my air fryer set to 375 and I'm gonna cook these breasts for six minutes and then I'm gonna flip them and add some more of the marinade. she goes. So my two halves of the chicken breast, they cooked pretty evenly. They're about the same size. I'm just gonna hit them up with a little lime and take a taste. Mm. That's really good. It's just so simple. It just tastes like juicy chicken with a little bit of seasoning, not too much. The lime juice, the soy sauce, so good and so easy. <laughs> Cheesecake is brilliant in an air fryer. It cooks really evenly and you don't need to use a water bath like you would in your regular oven. So it's easier. In the five minutes that it takes to preheat, I can mix up the batter. There it goes. I just have graham cracker crumbs here, but you can use any cookie crumbs. Second, if I don't wear an apron, man, just stir it together. But what you're looking for is wet sand. You can see that. And now I'm just gonna press it into the a little tin. My air fryer is ready. It can just hang out for a minute while I finish this. The thing about baking a cheesecake in the air fryer is you have to make sure that your cheesecake pan actually fits. Just measure it before you start because if you make the whole cheesecake and then you can't fit it into the air fryer, you'll be sad. You'll have to heat up your regular oven, so. So you just wanna press this into the bottom of the pan in an even layer so that everybody gets the same amount of crust on the bottom. So my cream cheese is at room temperature. This is really important because if your cream cheese is cold, it's gonna take a lot longer to beat until it's smooth. And you really wanna make sure there are no lumps because if you have lumps in the batter, you're gonna have lumps in your final cheesecake. So make sure it's smooth. Another important step for making cheesecake is you wanna just make sure to scrape the sides of the bowl because otherwise the cream cheese can stick and not get fully incorporated. All right, now we have condensed milk. So I'm not adding any extra sugar because it is all here. Two eggs and a teaspoon of vanilla. You could also use almond extract if you wanted. You could hit it up with some Grand Marnier. This cheesecake is ready to be flavored with whatever you want to put in it. And that's it. You don't even need to add salt because the cream cheese already has salt in it. So start out at low speed and then gradually increase the speed. Otherwise it will 
splash you in the face. And the second this is mixed, it's done. We put it in the pan and put it in the air fryer. So I purposely forgot to put the pan into the air fryer basket before I added the batter so that I could show you a trick for what to do if you accidentally forget to do that. You just take a big piece of foil, you want to fold it over a couple of times, you want a nice wide thick strip, you put your cheesecake on this and then I'm going to use this to lift it up and lower it into the hot basket and I'm not going to burn my hands. Watch me. I got this. There we go. There we go. So it's been 25 minutes. Let's check our cheesecake and see if it is done. I'm looking for a little bit of a jiggle, but not too liquidy. And because I have these foil strips, it's going to be actually very easy for me. Oh yeah, look at that. You might notice that the top is a little bit browner than other cheesecakes, and that is okay. Air fryer cheesecakes tend to get a little bit browner on top, but that doesn't affect how it's baked. It's going to be perfect inside, I think. It seems like it's going to be perfect inside. So now I'm going to let this cool completely and then I'm going to put it in the fridge and let it chill for several hours or overnight is even better. This is a perfectly cooked cheesecake. Look at it. It is creamy, beautiful. It's got the cherry pie filling on top, which you could leave off if you wanted to. But why would you? Mm. I'm just going to sit here and quietly eat this. Is cheesecake alone enough of a reason to get an air fryer? Only you can be the judge of that. This is so impressive. I mean, look what we did in the past 45 minutes. It's like we made sweet potato fries. We made chicken breasts. We made a cheesecake, not counting chilling it. An air fryer isn't just for french fries, it's not just for pizza bagels or for frozen dumplings. An air fryer will cook your entire dinner and even dessert. You can find these recipes and other air fryer recipes, including a really good Brussels sprout one, at nytcooking.com.